Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is another video from Synchronous Motors and here I will be solving end chapter question 6.2. Uh, so let's first of all see uh, the difference between Y and delta connection, whether it is a generator or motor. This is the Y connection and this is delta connection. One of the main difference between the two is that in the uh, Y connection, the terminal voltage VT is different from the phase voltage and the difference is of under root 3. So VT is under root 3 times V phasor. But in case of a uh, delta, V terminal and V phase are same. So V terminal equal to V phase. Now let's see the question. A 480 volt, 60 hertz, 400 horsepower, 0 0.8 power factor leading, 6 pole delta connected synchronous motor, has a synchronous reactance of 1.1 ohm and negligible armature resistance. So keep in mind this one. Ignore its friction, windage, and core losses for the purpose of this problem. And then we have to solve these four parts. So we'll do one by one. The first part is if the motor is initially supplying 400 horsepower at 0 0.8 power factor lagging, what are the magnitudes and angle of EA and IA? Although originally it was designed to be a 0 0.8 uh, power factor leading, but in this, with this load, it, uh, the power factor is 0 0.8 power factor lagging. And we have to find the magnitude and angle of EA and IA. Now, I hope uh, you remember what is EA and what is IA. I'll try to explain as well. First of all, let's see the phase diagram. So, this is uh, the V phase and we take this as a reference with angle 0. This is the current IA, the armature current and this is the induced voltage or uh, back EMF. We see from this uh, circuit. So we are only talking about this, this terminal and then JX IA is represented by this arm. Since RA is neglected, therefore, the drop across RA is not shown. Okay, now in the delta connection, uh, the one difference we told that V phase, that is the phase voltage and the terminal voltage are same, but the currents are different. The line current divided by under root 3 gives the phase current. So line current is more or greater than the phase current. So we have to keep this point in mind. Okay, so first of all, to calculate IA, we need to know IL, the line current from here. Now, this is the equation for P in, but we don't know P in. What is given is for P out. The output horsepower is 40 horsepower. This will convert into watts, so multiply by 746. So this is the output uh, power in kilowatt. And since there is no loss, therefore input and output will be same. So P in will also be 298.4 kilowatt. Okay, and now using this equation, We'll find IL, which is P divided by under root 3 VT power factor 0 0.8. So this 298.4 under root 3 VT is the terminal voltage 480 multiplied by power factor 0 0.8. So the line current is 449 uh, ampere. Now this is the magnitude of the line current. So we can find the magnitude of the phase current or armature current by dividing line current by under root 3. So this is the armature current IA. Okay, so we have found the magnitude of IA. Now we need to find its angle. Now it is 0 0.8 power factor lagging from here. We can get the angle. So lagging 
we power phase angle will be then negative for lagging negative cos inverse of power factor uh, and the angle will be minus 36.87 that means from here to this point this angle is minus 36.87 so now we can write in terms of a phasor ia this is bold a phasor so ia phasor you can just put a bar while you are writing with your pen uh, will be the magnitude and the phase angle so ia phasor known now we need to know ea phasor and from here you can see that this is what we are supplying in case of a motor. So this will be greater than drop in this. And since RA is negligible, so we'll not consider this. So drop in this. So we supplied minus drop will give us the EA. And now we can put the values 480 angle zero. Uh, the, the V phase is same as V terminal we mentioned and plugging in the values of uh, excess this is the current so we get EA384 minus 36.4 so we have got now this arm the magnitude is 384 and its angle this angle is called delta is minus 36.4 So both the items we have found. Now we go to part B. How much torque is this motor producing? So that is part one. Then what is the torque angle? And then how near is this value to the maximum possible torque? So we'll do one by one. Okay, so this is the formula for the uh, torque. We know V out, we have to calculate omega m this is the angular uh, rotational frequency or angular rotational speed p out we already know omega m we can find from the shaft speed which is given by this formula frequency is 60 given in the question and poles are six poles so the rpm will be 1200 rpm now from here to convert into omega m, we have to multiply this by 2 pi and divide by 60. So this multiplied by 2 pi divided by 60 second. So this will be our omega m. Now putting in the formula, we calculate the load. So it is 2375 Newton meter. So this is the load. And now we need to find the torque angle which is actually this angle the angle of ea we had already calculated the angle of ea which was this so this is the torque angle so the torque angle the um, delta is minus 36.4 as well okay now we come to the third part of the question okay just for comparison i'm noting this that the current angle is minus 36 and now ea angle is minus 36.4 now this is minus 36.87 and this is minus 36.4 so slightly above slightly going towards the positive side okay so how near is this value of the torque to the maximum possible induced torque now we can use the same formula we just write maximum so to get maximum torque load we have to find out p out maximum okay so let's see how to find we'll use these two formulas we we had already known this and if we convert vt into v phase that is vt is equal to under root 3 v phase so we'll get this second formula from here we'll first of all calculate ia cos theta so we'll see how to do that okay now this is the equation this is the sorry phase diagram this is ea v phi and the ia now look here carefully this arm is actually equal to ea sine delta now if this triangle is the rectangular triangle so perpendicular is equal to hypotenuse ea 
and sine of the angle. Now this angle is delta here. So this part is okay, but it is equal to x s i a cos theta. Now this is slightly difficult. So what we'll do, we'll separate this part and uh, okay so this is the separated part now remember this angle is theta how we know this angle is theta this this from v phase to this angle is theta and with, with slight um, uh, geometry this is 90 degree these are the opposite angles so whatever is here the same this 90, so this 90, therefore this angle has to be uh, theta, which is this angle here from here to here is theta. Okay, so we are here and uh, for ease of understanding, I'll just turn it a little bit. So turn 90 degree and from here now you can see that this is the base and the formula for base is the hypotenuse is xs i a this is x s i a hypotenuse and multiply by cosine of the theta so this is the base so we can say that this is equal to x s i a cos theta also so from here we'll write these two and i a cos theta will be this term divided by x s and we'll now plug in this value here to get P. So putting in the value uh, in this equation i a cos theta, so we'll get this equation free v and i a cos theta is this whole term. Okay, now how can we maximize this? These are all the terms are fixed here. The only variable is this theta, so we can vary the angle theta, and the maximum value of sine, uh, sorry, sine uh, delta is uh, one. So we'll use that to maximize this. Since maximum value of sine delta is one, therefore putting that value, we get P maximum. So this is P maximum. And now putting this value in P maximum equation, which was P maximum divided by omega S, we get this equation. And now plugging in the values, we know all the values, 480 EA we had calculated the magnitude, this was the omega and xs is 1.1 so our answer is uh, 4000 newton meters so this is much greater than what we had got uh, earlier it was i think 29 something 2938 or something and anyway so this is the maximum value okay now part 3 if ea is increased by 15% now keep in mind that in, in one of the questions, I think example one, we have said that EA is fixed. Okay, EA is fixed only if IF is fixed. But if the field current is increased, then the EA will also increase. So here it is saying that EA is increased by 15%. So the new EA, we are calling it EA2, will be 1.15 of the old EA or EA1. EA1 was 384. So new EA will be 441.6. And now, what is the angle delta? Delta 2 actually. So this was our old EA1. And this is our new EA2. Its, its length is more, 446 now, instead of 384. One point, we can only slide it along this line because this magnitude is fixed fixed by the power so we can move only in this way we can't go like here okay so that is one point now we need to find this value of delta 2 okay now this was as i was mentioning that this is dependent on the power which is constant and in the first case or in any case, we this is value that it is E A sine theta. And for these two cases, it will be like E A1 sine, uh, sine delta 1. And sorry, I'm mixing theta and delta. This is delta. And then for the E A2, it will be E A2 sine delta 2. 
So equating these two, we can find delta 2. So this equating sin delta 2, therefore delta 2 is given by this formula. Now we know all these values. So we'll plug in the values 384, 441, and sine of minus 36. So delta 2 will be minus 31.1. So you can see it is going further towards the positive side. Okay, so EA2 now in the phasor form 441.6 and angle minus 31.1 volt. Okay, so this is new EA. And now we have to find the armature current for this, for EA2, because armature current will vary. And just for reference, IA uh, or IA1 had this angle, 36. Then delta 1 had this angle, minus 36.4. And EA2 had minus 31.1. Uh, so it is gradually going this way, angle moving. Okay, and now we'll use this formula to find the current IA2. Keep this diagram in mind. What is the new magnitude of the armature current? So from here, this is the new magnitude. We know all these values. So we'll plug in the values. And so IA2 is 227 minus 24.1. So if we plot IA2, it will be somewhere here because the angle has further reduced. It is minus 24.1, so it will go up. Remember this one, delta 2 was minus 31, so it will be further up because it is minus 24.1. So this is how it will look like. Okay, and the power factor, power factor is you now easy. To calculate the new power factor with cos of the angle, the cos of minus 24, so it will be 0 0.913 lagging because of the negative angle. So this was part C. Part D, actually, you need to learn uh, the MATLAB. Let me give you the concept. Calculate and plot motor's V curve. Now, V curve is the curve between the field current and the armature current. So it will, it, when we plot, it will be something like this. Uh, and to plot this, we'll take help of these three equations. This one, this one, this one. And the MATLAB program, I've just copied some of the lines from uh, the um, instructor's solution manual. Uh, and that is, first of all, IEF. We are, we are choosing 20 values of IEF from this range to this range. And for every value, we are calculating EA2. So calculate EA2. And then we'll also calculate delta 2. So calculating delta 2. And then we'll calculate the phasor form of EA2. Because we have to use phasor form here. So calculated that. And then we'll use this formula to calculate IA2. So we'll have about 20 values. And plotting, we will get this curve. So I hope uh, you have got some understanding of how to solve this type of a question. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.